Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I thought it would be a good idea to just go over the easiest yet most elegant garment that is out there, the circle skirt. In this video I'm gonna go over three different sizes or like volumes of circle skirts. I'm gonna show you how to actually pattern out a circle skirt of any volume actually and I'm gonna show you the differences that that makes in an actual example that I sewed. And of course would it be a video of mine if I didn't show you how to sew circle skirts? We're gonna go over that in the very end as well. So let's get started. The first circle skirt that we're gonna go over uses a full volume of a circle. For that skirt, same as for any other circle skirt, we need a waist measurement. I personally will pattern out all skirts to fit my waist measurement, but you can honestly use any waist measurement that you like. If you like your circle skirt or your skirt in general to sit lower than your waist, you can also do a mid hip measurement or you can also use your underbust measurement to get an empire waist. So basically you use the measurement on your body where you want your skirt to end up sitting. Then the second measurement is the length of the skirt. That can be super short, over your knee, or also full length. You are the designer here. For my skirt, I will use a length of 60 centimeters. That falls to about my knees, and I think it's gonna be a good length to actually compare the three different versions and the volume of each version. As you can see the volume better in a skirt to about the knee or longer rather than a shorter skirt. To draft the skirt, we're actually gonna use circles hence the name. Now for that we'll need a bit of math. <laughs> More specifically we'll need the formula to calculate a circumference. The formula for a circumference is c equals 2 times pi times the radius. With that formula we can calculate one circle and then we can rearrange the formula to calculate the second circle. These two circles are gonna be your waist circle and the hem circle. The waist circle, as you might have already guessed, has the circumference of your waist measurement or whatever you use for that measurement. Could be your underbust measurement. So what we have to calculate for that circle is actually the radius not the circumference. So let's actually rearrange this formula to r equals c divided by 2 times pi. Now we can put in our numbers and calculate the radius. For me that would be 66 centimeters for the circumference, so 66 centimeters divided by 2 times pi. And that equals 10.5 centimeters, which is the radius for my waist circle. I'm quickly gonna jump into Illustrator to pattern out my circle skirt. You can do that on paper, it is exactly the same method. So if you are doing it on paper, you can use these handy loops that form on your measuring tape. It's either with a push button or you also have a hole in your tape measure. So there are like different options, but you can basically just hold and then draw a circle with a pen using your measuring tape. I will be doing everything in Illustrator, so I actually need my diameter and not the radius. That's just how Illustrator works. So don't be confused that I have to put in 21 centimeters here. The radius stays the same at 10.5 centimeters as I just calculated it. The next calculation is a bit easier because we already have the radius that we need for the hem circle. And that is the radius of our waist circle plus the length of our skirt that we want to have. So for me that would be 10.5 centimeters plus 60 centimeters skirt length. So I have a radius of 70.5 centimeters for my hem circle. Again to draw this in Illustrator I have to double that to put in my diameter, so don't be confused. With all that done, let's break up the pattern into sections to be able to actually put it on our fabric in the end, as we only have a specific width of fabric, which is usually where I live, 140 centimeters standard width. When you double it, you have 70 centimeters, so your sections of a circle can never be wider than seven centimeters, but since my skirt is only 60 centimeters, long it's not gonna be longer or like wider than 70 centimeters. If you do anything longer than 70 centimeters or like 65 centimeters let's say then you'd have to section your circle in more sections to be able to fit it on your fabric. So for me I'm going to do one front piece that lays on fold 
and then two side pieces that also lay on fold and then two back pieces that don't lay on fold but have a seam in the center back to put a invisible zipper in. Let's also add a waistband of four centimeters width. I like to have double that because of my manufacturing technique so I am going to end up folding my waistband down on the inside and that is why I'm doing eight centimeters here. The length of my waistband is just my waist measurement that I also used for the waist circle in my skirt as they need to fit together. So that would be 66 centimeters. The waistband also lays on fold. So I'm going to have a piece that is 33 centimeters times eight centimeters. If you have a waistband that is more than 140 centimeters, again, 70 centimeters on fold because of the width of your fabric, you might have to also part this waistband in order to fit it on your fabric. But obviously fabrics might differ in width. So where you live, that might not be the case. So double check actually the width of fabric that you are using for your specific pattern. And this is what a full circle skirt looks like using a flowy polyester satin. Now, before we actually go into how to actually sew a circle skirt, let's quickly also go over the other two versions I have prepared for you in this video. The half circle skirt is, as the name already entails, a half circle. So we're not gonna use the volume of a full circle, but only half a circle. And the formula for that circle skirt is very similar to the one of a full circle but we have to double our circumferences. That might seem counterintuitive because we want to use a half of that circle, but to make it more understandable, let's actually think about how the skirt is made. We're still gonna draft our pattern using a waist circle and a hem circle, but with the difference that half of your circumference of the waist circle is already your waist measurement. So the full circumference of your waist circle has to be double your waist measurement. Therefore, the formula for half a circle skirt is C equals two times pi times R, divided by two or C equals pi times R. Let's rearrange that formula and we're gonna have R equals C divided by pi. For me, that would be again, 66 centimeters divided by pi, which is 21 centimeters, which also makes a lot of sense because it is double the radius of our first waist circle. And the 21 centimeter again on Illustrator, I have to double in order to use my program. So I'm putting in 42 centimeters here for my diameter and then the same as for the full circle skirt, I can calculate the hem by adding up the 21 centimeters and the 60 centimeters length of my skirt, which equals 81 centimeters, which is the radius for my hem circle. I'm gonna section this pattern into a front piece and two back pieces. The front piece lays on fold again, and the back piece has a dividing seam in the center back for the invisible zipper. The waistband stays exactly the same for all the circle skirts, as it's just your waist measurement. Obviously you can vary the waistband width. So if you'd like to have a smaller waistband or a wider waistband, that is completely up to you. You are the designer here. And again, this is what the half circle skirt looks like on me with a 60 centimeter length out of the polyester satin as well. Let's actually go in the other direction for the last circle skirt and create a skirt that is more than one circle. Let's do two circles. So the waist circle needs to have a circumference that is half your waist measurement so that we can double it. And therefore we're going to have a full waist measurement for our circle. So we're doing exactly the opposite of what we just did for our half circle skirt. So the formula for that is one half C equals two times pi times R or C equals four times pi times R. When we rearrange that, the formula for our radius is R equals C divided by four times pi, which for me is 66 centimeters divided by four times pi, which is 5.25 centimeters. So yet again, it makes a lot of sense as it is half of the radius of my full waist circle radius. All pattern pieces have to be cut out double the amount of usually as we are making a skirt out of two circles. So let's section the pattern into the same pattern pieces as we did for the full circle, but just double the amount we have to cut every piece out. 
the waistband again stays the same. And this is what a double circle skirt looks like on me with a length of 60 centimeters out of a polyester satin. And these are all three versions next to each other. You can see a drastic difference in volume between all three of them. And I honestly love all of them, but I think for thicker, heavier weight fabrics like wool, less is more. So I would go rather towards the half circle skirt, also considering the cost of woolen fabrics. Satin fabric like rayon or even silk or the one that you see in the example here looks absolutely stunning in all three versions. Yet I would reserve the double circle skirt for special occasions garments as it is so voluminous and needs double the amount of a circle skirt so especially silk would also be a pretty big investment. I made another full circle skirt in another video which I'll link for you guys up here in the eye. I used a rayon for that and I did a 70 centimeter length of the skirt. It also has like a small slit in the front dividing seam so it's a bit different and I absolutely love that skirt. If I think about it, I am using circle skirts pretty often. <laughs> I never really noticed that. <laughs> of course, this pattern can be altered to have pockets. We all want pockets in our skirts as it is just super, super useful. <laughs> For that, I suggest to alter the seams in the full circle skirt to have side seams. The half and the double circle skirt already have side seams if you section them how I sectioned them. So you can just put your pockets right in there. So that is it for the theory behind the patterning of circle skirts. I hope it was understandable. I tried my best to actually make it visually understandable of how to pattern out circle skirts. And with that, you can go ahead and like do any kind of volume that you like. I will also put a circle skirt calculator in the description down below if you just do not want to calculate anything of that yourself. There are so many helpful tools online that do that for you. <laughs> so that is usually linked in my description box anyways, circle skirt calculator. Moving on to the sewing part of this video. I already have my pattern pieces for my half circle skirt cut out and I can now sew the side seams together. Before that, I like to iron my pieces flat as it's easiest to do that when the skirt is not yet sewn together. I always iron with the grain as the edges can otherwise stretch out as the sides are on the bias. I can now put right sides of my front and my back piece together on one side and then the same on the other side to close all dividing seams. In this case, I only have two seams, but depending on which skirt you're making, there might be more. Just start with your back piece, then put the bias edge together with a piece that lays on fold, so like one big piece, and close that seam. Continue doing that until only one back piece is left to finish the skirt. After overlocking the edge, I iron the seam allowance towards the back, again making sure to iron with the grain. Now I take my waistband that I already prepared with ironed on interfacing and put it right sides together with the waistline of the skirt. I only have a notch for the center front, which I match up with the one in my skirt, and then I pin the waistband in place, making sure there are no folds in the waistline at all. I can then go ahead and sew both pieces together. Once the waistline is sewed, I like to iron the seam allowance into the waistband and put in the zipper. I always put zippers in the same way with the center back seam still being open. I then fold down the top of the zipper to see where it ends and pin that right sides onto the middle of my waistband. There should also be a notch there. I work my way down, making sure the seam allowance of the waistline faces into the waistband. While pinning, neither the fabric nor the zipper should be stretched. If anything, add a little bit more fabric into the length of the zipper to avoid the zipper bubbling up. Now with an inseam zipper foot, I can sew the first side of the zipper in place. To match up the waist seam and generally to get the neatest result, Result. I like to put needles in the other side of the zipper to mirror the positions of top waist seam and bottom. While pinning the zipper onto the other side of the skirt, I can then refer to the needles to get the best result possible.
And now when zipping everything up, you can see that the waist seam matches up perfectly. And that is just all thanks to the needles I put in place there. Now let's continue with the center back seam. I put the zipper notches together and work my way up to the stitching line of the zipper as I want to sew as closely to that line as possible. Using a one-sided foot, I can start from the end of the zipper, like where the stitching line is, sewing all the way down to the hem. If there is a small gap between the two stitching lines, that's totally fine. We're gonna camouflage that with ironing and then also with bar tacking the zipper onto the seam allowance, so don't worry. I like to press my center back seam open as that's just how the seam allowance falls because of the zipper. As I already overlocked the edges separately, that is super easy to do. And I give another press from the outside to just make everything look neat and tidy. To finish the waistband, I fold the zipper band outwards and into the seam allowance. This way I make sure it's not visible in that corner. I then fold the waistband right sides onto the zipper, making sure the stitching line on the lower edge matches up with the waistline of the skirt. I pin everything in place and sew the sides with a one-sided foot. I then clip away the corners to be able to fold everything right sides out. Now I can fold the seam allowance of the waistband on the inside over and under and pin the resulting fold over top of the stitching line of the waist seam. I make sure to cover the stitches evenly throughout the whole waistband to get a neat result. Once I'm done from the right side of the skirt, I can stitch in the ditch to fix the inside in place. If done correctly, this will not be visible from the outside and just adds a simple top stitch on the inside. This is what it looks like once done. Let's give the waistband another press. The bottom end of the zipper still kind of wobbles around, so let's fix it to the seam allowance with a bar tack on either side. This is gonna make it easier to pull up. And the last step is to hem the skirt. I like to do a five millimeter hem, which I fold twice and then top stitch. After a last iron, the skirt is completely done. And that is it already for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this kind of different style of video too. This is more of an, I don't know, patterning approach or like how to pattern out basic blocks in a more visualized way, I guess. It's not just top-down view of me making a pattern. I thought that would be quite a nice change for now as I was doing a lot of very huge projects lately so that was a very very nice thing like a different thing for me to do as well i really enjoyed it i hope you did too if you haven't already please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that i post i still hope to reach 100k before the end of 2022 i know it's already a bit late for that but there's still time, so it would be amazing if you could help me on this journey and just hit subscribe to support this channel. In the meantime, if you haven't already, you should go ahead and check out my social media, that is Instagram, Pinterest, and uh, also YouTube Shorts. I am doing tips and tricks for all of my projects in between up my uploads, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. Links are all in the description down below. And the most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to just check out my Etsy store. That is also linked down below. You can find the direct link to the pattern, the base blocks of the circle skirt that I was showing in today's video in the description box down below. I have a Christmas sale going on at the moment if you're watching this by the time of me uploading. So if you're interested in maybe gifting somebody a self-made garment, go ahead and check out my store. I have plenty of patterns, all of which have a video tutorial on them, so it's super easy to make them yourself. And I bet 
whoever receives that present will be super happy with their new garment. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you not next Sunday because it's Christmas next Sunday, but the week after that. So in 2023, I will upload my next video on the 1st of January, which just happens to be a Sunday. So I will be back in 2023 with new projects and new motivation and in a good mood and everything, you know. And I hope you're gonna have a very merry Christmas and happy holidays and a good time slipping into hopefully not literally I don't know where you live but it's very slippery outside here at the moment it's super snowy into 2023 so until then bye guys